Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing the ultimate guide to Malay, another civilization for Age of Empires 2. If you guys are not familiar with the series, I basically go ahead and take one civilization every week and go in depth on how to play the civilization, whatever its options in the tech tree, as well as the strengths and weaknesses. I also cover where you should play them in terms of what map and also some of their good and bad matchups. So you really get an in-depth view of what the civilization is all about and how you would want to play it in a real game. Without further ado, let's hop right in and take a look at the Malay. So starting things off, we can see that Malay are classified as a naval civilization, but in reality, there are a lot more than that. Their first bonus is that they advance to the next age 66% faster. This is a really interesting bonus, and I'm going to go a little bit more in depth on it later on in this video. The next bonus is that fish traps cost minus 33% and provide three times food. This used to be providing infinite food, but it's been changed to three times food. It's still a really good bonus, and in drawn out games, you might have to refresh them a couple times, but in general, it's going to be a really efficient way to convert your wood into food. And then their third bonus is that back Battle Elephants cost minus 30% in Castle Age and minus 40% in Imperial Age, a really heavy discount, but it's balanced out by the fact that you don't get as many upgrades for those Battle Elephants as you might expect. The unique unit is the Karambit Warrior, and we'll talk about him a little bit more in the tech tree when we see him. The unique techs are as follows. In Castle Age, Thalassocracy, which gives your docks the ability to upgrade into harbors, basically making them like guard towers, giving them the ability to fire arrows in a short radius. And then in Imperial Age, they get the unique tech called Forced Levy, which makes the Militia Line cost no gold, and instead replaces the gold cost with additional food cost, a really strong option in late game when gold starts to run out. And then their team bonus, which gives their docks 100% extra line of sight. This also applies in 1v1 because you are considered to be a part of your own team. Moving on now to the tech tree, let's see what they have as far as options goes. In the archer range, they have really strong arbalest right off the bat with elite skirmisher fully upgraded with thumb ring, but you're missing a lot in terms of other options. No elephant archer, no hand cannoneer, no heavy cab archer, no parthian tactics. So you're really streamlined into foot archers and skirmishers. For their barracks, it's really quite simple. You have 200 swordsmen and halberdier fully upgraded. So you're only missing champions, but you have everything else. And remember the 200 swordsmen do benefit from force levy, which is a really key part of Malay's super late game. Their stable is not that impressive though, with only light cab and cavalier teched into. No bloodlines available whatsoever. And you do get access to elite battle elephant, but wait till you see the blacksmith. This is not really as great as it seems. However, it is a solid option, especially with that massive discount that you're getting in castle age and imperial age. Moving on now to the siege workshop, you see that they have calf ram, onager, heavy scorpion, and bomber cannon. So you have pretty good siege overall. You're just missing that heavy late game siege like Siege Ram and Siege Onager, but it's really not the biggest deal ever. You do get Bomber Cannon, which is pretty good. Moving on now to the Blacksmith, you get everything except Chain Barding Armor and Plate Barding Armor. Really big hit to their cavalry line, and in my opinion, it makes it so their cavalry is pretty useless in most cases, so it's very situational. But their elephants, like I said, are still pretty good. I would say that they're just going to be really weak against Archer units and naturally against Monks because they're elephants, but against melee units, their elephants will be great to take out bases, their elephants are going to be great nonetheless. Their dock is extremely solid though. You have access to all the upgrades and all the units except heavy demo ship. And then as far as university goes, you get all the key options. So bomber tower, siege engineers, and keep missing only a couple random upgrades. Okay, let's talk about their Karambit Warrior a little bit more now. So the Karambit Warrior is their unique unit and it's actually quite unique. This unit only takes half a population spot. So if you have two Karambit Warriors, that counts as one population. If you have four, it counts as two, so on and so forth. It's a very cheap and spammable unit, costing only 25 food and 15 gold but it has very weak stats at 30 hp and 7 attack base at least version gets upgraded a little bit from that the big thing you need to understand about the Krambit warrior is that it's going to be amazing to counter certain infantry units like eagle warriors for example but it's going to be weak against heavy cavalry and mass archers it could be okay versus mass archers if you can out spam those archers and kind of overwhelm them before they can thin out your numbers but in general you probably want to use this unit to overwhelm armies and go for some sneak attacks because of how cheap and spammable they are their main use though in competitive Competitive games is really just to counter units like Huskrolls or Eagle Warriors and this kind of like anti-archer infantry units. Moving on now to the Monastery, we can see that they have all the upgrades except Fervor and Theocracy, so very solid options from the Monastery in general. And then as far as late game economy upgrades, you have everything except two Mensal, so quite solid in that department as well. Alright, now that we've taken a good look at the tech tree, let's talk a little bit more about Malay in terms of their strengths and weaknesses and how you would want to actually play the Civ out in a real game. So the main thing you need to understand about Malay to really get a good idea of its strengths and weaknesses is to understand that first bonus that we talked about. It's the fact that they advance the next age 66% faster. This bonus is kind of a double-edged sword. So it's placed a little bit in the strengths and a little bit in the weaknesses as well. On one hand, the bonus lets you get up to next age faster than your opponent. And so you can get your power spike, important upgrades. You can mass units that you wouldn't have access to in the previous age. So that alone is a massive advantage and it gives you a great power spike and a great timing window to potentially attack your opponent 
and take some great trades. But on the downside, you get to the next age faster, which means that your villagers have less time to collect resources on the way up. And so you get to the next age with a lot less resources than you would normally have with another civilization. So that's really the big downside to this bonus. And it's something that you need to understand when thinking about Malay in general. This is why the biggest strength of Malay is also its biggest weakness. Just to further explain this bonus, you get a villager advantage naturally from going up to next age faster than your opponent, because when you're going up, you can't make villagers from the town center. So if you spend less time going up, you can start making villagers quicker than your opponent who is still advancing to the next age, assuming you clicked up at the same time, for example. And so as a general rule, you get an extra two villagers when you both go up to feudal age, you get an extra four villagers when you both go up to castle age. And I think imperial age is around an extra six or seven villagers. But like I said, it does come with that massive drawback of getting up to next age with less resources. And especially in open maps, this could be a massive danger. And I would say that another big strength that they have is the fact that their late game is quite solid, especially when all the gold runs out, getting access to those 200 swordsmen costing no gold is going to be quite solid. And I would say that their second drawback, their second big weakness is their lack of mobility. Their stable is pretty awful. And so you're going to be lacking mobility in Castle Age all the way up until late game in Imperial Age when other people will have light cavalry or Hussar with good upgrades. You're not going to have the kind of mobility to match them. You're going to have to kind of chase them around or get castles in your base to defend from those raids. All right, moving on now to the big power spikes for Malay. When should you look to attack and when should you look to kind of seek advantage or force fights? This is really simple. It's basically at the start of every age because like I said, Malay is getting to the next age faster, which is going to be your main power spike as well. So it's very simple with Malay. Your power spike is at the start of every age. As far as matchups go, I personally like to play Malay into other archersives. I feel like Malay have a really good matchup versus other archersives because you usually are on similar units, archers and skirmishers, but then Malay just gets to the next age faster and that lets you get your upgrades earlier, lets you get earlier ballistics, earlier chemistry to start massing bomber cannons. And just in general, Malay feel like a great answer to a lot of archer civilizations. They're not necessarily bad against cavalry civilization, but I feel like what tends to happen against most cav civs is that your extra uptime doesn't get you that same advantage and then you usually just die to their superior mobility and it's going to be really hard to kind of catch up with what they're doing around the map whereas you have to just fight in one area and the timings don't really feel as impactful so that's kind of the big thing with Malay. i feel like they're strong into archer civs but weaker into cav civs and as far as a general good matchup for Malay, i feel like Malay is extremely good against mezzo civilizations compared to other civs because you have a lot of options to counter what mezzo civilizations usually want to go for they want to go for eagles or range units and Malay have elephants and karamba warriors to deal with eagles Eagle warriors and you also just have a really good matchup like I said versus archer civilizations in general so if Mezzo's playing archers you're totally fine if they play eagles look to go for karambits or elephants based on the situation it's a really solid matchup in my opinion so Aztecs, Incas and Mayans will generally struggle against Malay in some cases as far as maps that Malay are really good on, in my opinion, they're going to be pretty good on all water maps because Malay is, at the end of the day, a good naval civilization with their fish trap bonus being extremely solid, as well as their uptime, letting you get up to feudal age really fast and going for like galleys or fire galleys faster than your opponent. Usually just lets you win water against most B tier water civs, but some civs like Italian, Portuguese, Vikings can keep up with the fast paced Malay. So Malay is nowhere near like the best water civ, but maybe something like top five, top six water civs, Malay is somewhere around there and then for certain maps that are hybrid you know a little bit of water a little bit of land malay is also very good because just getting up to next age lets you win water quite quickly and then focus on land right after so i would say any kind of hybrid or pure water map malay is going to be extremely solid on and then the other map that you might not think malay is very good on is actually arena they're extremely good on maps like arena and hideouts because you basically go unpunished with your faster uptime so even though you get to next age with less resources it's very hard for them to punish you and break your walls and kind of force you to fight them before you're uptime pays off and before your faster tech your faster town centers tend to pay off so just on these booming maps like arena hideouts you get a massive villager lead with Malay and you can usually dictate the pace of the game with your quicker imperial age as far as open land maps like Arabia I would say that this is the biggest weakness for Malay but I personally tend to still kind of like them on this map in some matchups like I said archers in general Malay feel pretty good on but like I said open land map generally speaking not going to be the go-to comfort zone for Malay and you're gonna have to play a lot more defensive if you want to thrive on open maps, I'd recommend going for openings like a Drush or defensive archer opening just to basically buy yourself a little bit of time in Feudal Age and let those villagers really kick in and then wait for a Castle Age timing to really do anything on the map. That's typically how I'd like to play Malay just to play it a little bit more safe and be completely fine going into the mid game.
So just in conclusion, I feel like the Malay are a pretty strong archer civilization in general, with some really interesting options going into the mid and late game. Generally speaking, they're going to be good in slower paced games, where you're able to buy yourself a little bit more time and kind of get out of those danger timings where other civs are looking to pounce on you. And Malay is especially good when it's able to dictate the pace of the game with its extremely strong castle age and imperial age timings. Make sure to utilize Malay to its full potential, especially going into that late game with some of its extremely strong trash options like the 200 swordsman and the cheap elephants. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching this guide on Malay, and stay tuned for next week where I cover a different civilization. Take care, and bye for now.